Well, I'm chopping some nuts for something special and festive, and that is for Gudi Padwa. Well, Gudi Padwa is a springtime festival, which actually is a traditional New Year for Maharashtrians across the globe. Hey guys, it's the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar, and welcome to Rajshri Food, which is your ultimate destination for 100% vegetarian recipes. Well, today I am actually making a recipe which is my home recipe, and that is basundi. Let's begin. I'm using, of course, nuts. I'm using almonds, I'm using pistachios and cashews. Well, almonds and cashews need to be toasted and pistachios need to be lightly blanched. Why? I'll tell you, of course, because almonds need to be nice and toasted. Cashews, of course, need to be toasted, but the pistachios need to be a little softer and, of course, it becomes easier to remove their skin. Also, these nuts need to be non-salted. Well, there are two to three different ways in how you can toast it or roast it. One, you can get them readily toasted in the market. Two, you can use a pan. All you need to do is take the nuts in the pan and just kind of keep turning them over time and again. It could take somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes on low to medium flame. The third step is to heat it or rather toast it in either an oven or a microwave. In an oven, it generally takes around six minutes at 160 degrees Celsius. What you need to do is, of course, once the six minutes are up, you need to bring them out of the oven and cool them completely. Till that time, well, we are not the best judges of whether it is toasted or not. But after six minutes of baking and some around 10 to 15 minutes of cooling, you'll realize that the nuts are actually perfectly toasted. Once that is done, you need to cut them into thin slivers the way I'm doing. After almonds, I'm next moving on to cashew nuts, which are also toasted. Well, these unfortunately do not get slivered. So what you need to do is just kind of shred them. And what will happen eventually is it will convert into flakes. Do not use powder or do not use half or broken cashew nuts. Well, broken cashew nuts, the ones that you get in the market, trust me, are possibly one of the cheapest varieties. Don't go for that. For festivals and generally for your home consumption, you need nuts that are of superior quality. Go for that, toast it, chop it, and keep it ready. See here if you see the difference, these are kind of broken into tiny bits and these are perfectly slivered. So that's the difference between the two nuts. So do not get disturbed or perturbed by something like this. The next are pistachios. Pistachios need to be blanched for two reasons. One is because the skin of a pistachio is generally thicker amongst all the nuts. And secondly, you blanch it because you want the pistachio to become nice, bright and emerald-like. Our nuts are of course chopped and ready and you can definitely do this a day prior. The next step and almost like a finale year, imagine it's a recipe that begins and kind of ends in terms of the hard work that you put in. It's as simple as taking full fat milk and transferring it in a cauldron or a deep vessel. And all you need to do is stir it till it kind of begins to reduce. Now, if you notice, the milk has actually started boiling. Well, at this stage, it's not about stirring it only. It's also about scraping it simultaneously and intermittently because you need it to stick onto the sides. Yes, to begin with, it has to be soft because the moment it starts drying up, when that comes back into the milk, that will be easier and better if you're making a rabdi, which is nothing but a basundi, which is condensed further down. But we need to stop somewhere midway where the milk is condensed, it's thickened, it's sweetened, it's luscious, it's just a tinge of yellow, and that's what a beautiful basundi is all about. At this stage, while stirring, Let's add in saffron. Now these are strands of saffron which are just lightly toasted because that will help in bringing out all the color and the flavor. It's been somewhere around 12 minutes and if you see the milk has of course reduced to somewhere around three-fourths its original quantity. This is the time when we start adding in the sugar. Well, this is of course for sweetness and you can use a lot of sugar substitutes as well, depending on your family preferences. But for now, this is sugar. 
let's stir this well and this is where you need to be actually extra cautious because the sugar will start burning at the bottom but you need to keep intermittently stirring so that it's constantly suspended in the milk It's been boiling and bubbling away to glory and of course I'm also intermittently and simultaneously stirring all of this. It's been 20 minutes now and here you see it's actually transformed into this luscious beautiful mass. With this off goes the flame and with this I'm adding in the dry fruits. To begin with pistachios, cashew and almonds. Well, it has to look festive, it has to look rich, it has to look stunning and that can only happen with the use of dry fruits and nuts. Well, give it a quick stir and after this I'm adding in an optional ingredient and that is actually green cardamom. Well, I'm saying this is optional because even if you have this just like that, trust me it tastes wonderful but this is just an additional flavor if you please. I'm actually using green cardamom because this is a spice that was used by my grandmother. You know, I always say in various forums and in several videos of mine that food actually has the strongest memory. It's so nostalgic that it immediately reminds you of someone who's either made it or some family where you've eaten it. So with this, cardamom for me, but in your case, you can add in nutmeg at this stage and that's again completely personal. Cardamom powder, of course, needs to be ground absolutely fresh whenever required and that actually brings out a lot of prominent earthy aroma. One quick stir and with this your basundi is done and ready. Well the next step or the next stage is to cool this down completely. Well I like it warm personally but I know basundi is supposed to be eaten cold. So the next step is to cool this down completely and then this goes straight in your serving bowls. Well, Gudi Padwa to us is an extremely special festival because that is that one festival in the year when the entire family is there present for lunch. And that's when mothers generally make a huge grand thali of typical Maharashtrian specialties. Of course, there's an option between masale bhat and sar or varan bhat. Then there are things like aruvadi, papad, pickle, so much. Then there is um, batata chi bhaji, there is shrikhand puri, and it all then tops up with this wonderful basundi. Well, make this for your family, make this for your friends and have a blast this Kodi Padwa. On that note, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Raj Shri Food and for more such stunning recipes, stay tuned.